Hey everybody, what is going on? It's Orvi Woe back with another Call of Duty video. Again, in our How to Get Better at Warzone series. Today we're going to be talking about our weapon loadouts and what you can be doing to help yourself succeed and have a, a little better advantage um, in Warzone uh, than going in just kind of willy-nilly and not knowing where to start. Again, this series is going to be based mostly for beginner players or newer players. So a lot of you may already know what you want to do here, but for the people that are just starting out or maybe just don't really have a great grasp on what you want to pick for your guns or how to decide what guns to run, this is, is going to help out a little bit here. So let's, uh, let's switch over here to our loadouts. Now, one big question that you're going to have to ask yourself a lot as we go through this series is what's important to you. Is it important to you to get better or is it important to you to just have fun and play? Because just having fun and playing, if it gets you to play more, will in turn help you play a little better. It won't be as quick. The, uh, the growth will not be nearly as fast or as steep, but it, the more you play, the better you're gonna get regardless of what you use. So if you think that it'll help you more to do that, go for it have fun that's going to be the most important part if this is just a grind and it it just it pains you to play every day you'll get a little better but you'll hate it in the process so who cares but if you are focused on getting better and uh and it doesn't bother you to kind of maybe try one load out and play it for quite a while uh, or different things like that there are definitely ways that we can help improve uh, and and get you a little uh, ahead of the game when you're playing against other people around your scam, same skill level. So answer that question to yourself first, uh, and then once you get in, we'll show you kind of what you want to look at through your loadouts. So uh, the main question when you're building a loadout uh, about what guns to use, it's honestly, it's going to shift as the meta shifts to a degree. My dogs are going crazy over here. But... The, the main question, regardless of the meta, is how can we cover the most ground with our two guns, with our loadout? So what we, what we want to look at, it, it wouldn't do us any good to run two snipers. It wouldn't do us any good to run two submachine guns, really, usually. Uh, because say you're running uh, the Cold War MP5 and the Bullfrog. Well, those are both excellent up close, and maybe the bullfrog can even stretch a little to the mid, but if you're ever stuck in a situation where there's nothing in between you and your enemy, and you're 100 meters away, you're probably going to lose to anybody that's got an AR or a sniper. You're just not going to be able to close that gap quick enough. Um, same way goes with snipers. If you have two snipers, or if, say, you have an extreme long-range AR, like uh, like the growl or uh, and a sniper, well, that's excellent until you're stuck into in a house where you're within five meters fighting and everyone else has gallows and street sweepers and MP5s or or what have you. So we need to be able to cover the most ground in one class that we can. Uh, now there are a bunch of ways to look at this depending on how the meta changes as well. Sometimes when there's a really overpowered secondary, you can get away with just running Ghost on all your classes, kind of like how I have these set up, uh, and then pick up a second gun off of another Ghost drop as you fall, as you go forward. Uh, sometimes it's more important to have overkill on your first class, get your two guns right away, and then pick up Ghost later on in the game. Uh, that is going to change quite a bit as the game just progresses itself. You'll kind of have to figure out where we are in the meta uh, when you see this video on that. At the moment, uh, the sec there's no secondary that's super overpowered. The Psychovs were, uh, but they're not at the moment. So you can definitely grab Ghost off the rip if you want to. They're good enough to handle themselves, but I would still recommend getting your second gun as quick as possible. Uh, so for me at the moment, because there's no super strong secondary, I'm running an overkill class from the get-go just because I want to be able to handle anything I run into quick. Also, I tend to play pretty aggressively, and because of that, I want to be able to cover as much ground as possible from the start. So um, when you're looking at this, you want guns that can do well up close, cover most of the mid-range, and then you want to try and get some long range as well in there. Um, 
at the moment this is my favorite loadout this xm4 right now at the moment the way that i have it set up here is an absolute beast i, I think it's as good as almost any submachine gun at the up close stuff um maybe the bullfrog is i think the bullfrog technically if you break down just numbers i think the bullfrog is probably still a little better but this compares very well with it and then when you get about past 15 20 meters this gun is much better uh, this can cover anything from short to mid um, and the way i have it built here is for movement speed i can go over a little of that in the in the uh, in a minute here too and then to cover the long range the anything that i feel like my xm4 can't quite hit to the extreme or the more long range we have a sniper set up and i'm running the pellington essentially just because i like it uh the car is the sniper to use at the moment there's really no way around it um but the pellington is very similar and so i like this loadout with the pellington so it doesn't have to be these two guns these are the two that i've had the most luck with recently um but you just kind of want to look at it as is in that manner what's my close to mid what's my mid to long and so you can do that by running uh let's say let's just go down here and build us a class let's say you want to run um the let's say you want to run the bullfrog i've got it leveled so we get us a bullfrog and let's get all this stuff off of here probably going to want the groove suppressor on most things there are some ways around that you can run nothing on the front or the eliminator sometimes but the groove suppressor it's tough to beat in the moment most of the time now on the subs you're looking at task force uh as the good barrel this has changed a lot recently uh the cold war guns came in and none of these worked right and then they worked differently then they've changed them again since then so you'll kind of want to play with this you have some room to play around now but what they say that they do on the pros and cons now should be what they actually do that was not the case in the past anyways task force is usually a good bet on this uh on the bullfrog specifically a lot of times you can get away without running any sort of of uh, magazine because it already has so many bullets but the spetsnaz 85 is good i always like to run skeletal stock on just about everything because any of my up close guns i want to be moving as fast as possible strafe speed all of that you saw on the xm4 it was built all for movement skeletal stock is going to give you the most there um, and then under barrel you can either uh you can either do under barrel or sometimes an optic depending on how you feel personally about the iron sights of whatever gun you're setting up um, specifically with the bullfrog the headshot multiplier is so high that if you have trouble getting headshots sometimes an optic will help with that uh, but if not then you're either going to want to run uh, an underbarrel uh, like the speed grip or the spetsnaz um, and you know you can run some aim down sight stuff here the problem with the aim down sight time rear grips is that it hurts your sprint to fire time and with close-up guns we want our sprint to fire as high as possible so um for what we're going to do now we will do we will do uh we'll do the bruiser grip this is a pretty decent loadout there's there may be more uh more meta loadouts or more popular loadouts but this is a good starting point and then you can play with things to see what works best for you because even though something may be better uh, by you know two percent or whatever your gameplay is your gameplay and you're going to need to find out what works best for you so anyways we now we have us a close-up gun we're going to go over here to overkill because we're making an overkill class and now we want a mid-range mid to long range gun again it's pretty open right now uh sniper and sub if you feel like you're getting really good if your aim is good if you feel like you're really cooking you can go sniper sub that's pretty tough so if you are kind of new to the game i would recommend sub ar or ar sniper try not to make that gap so wide because you're going to get stuck in those mid-range fights with uh, with nothing really excellent to work with um, there's a bunch of different ways you can run right now until they nerf it and they are going to nerf it the AMAX is still kind of the king of your mid to long range on ARs. Uh, if you want lower recoil, the Kilo 
or the M13 are excellent. Uh, the Grau is still one of the best guns in the game. Very, very low recoil. Again, much like these, all these three are very close together. Not a lot of recoil, not a lot of power, but they're going to hit what you aim at. Um, the Ram 7 is a very good choice. The only big drawback with it is your movement speed is going to be really slow. But let's just pick something kind of normal. The M4 from Modern Warfare is a very solid gun. Whoops. Lost it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very middle gun. It doesn't do anything incredibly well, but it doesn't do anything awful either. So we're again, we're gonna go monolithic. On any Modern Warfare gun, you pretty much always want the monolithic. There's really no drawback to running it. Uh, on your mid to long range gun, you're gonna want whichever barrel gives you the most bullet velocity and most damage range because we are trying to stretch this out so for us it's the grenadier um and in this case since we are going mid to long range now we're going to want to put a side on it the vlk tends to be the best for the modern warfare guns j god actually just did some testing on the cold war scopes and the axial three times reduces your recoil uh, on those guns so you'll want to run that route uh, I like to go with as many bullets as possible pretty much all the time and then when you're looking through all of these on these grips where there's so many of them the rule of thumb essentially with modern warfare guns is go commando foregrip you can try Merc as well that for a while there it was glitched out to where it helped more it doesn't anymore some people still like it better totally up to you commando foregrip this is a very solid loadout that you can put on pretty much any modern warfare AR and do pretty well at range. So that gets us all of our very close uh, to kind of the shorter mid. This will pick up on the full mid to our pretty long. We are gonna be at a little bit of a disadvantage against snipers. That tends to be a little easier to outmaneuver than when you get caught up close to someone. Um, when you're stuck in a building with someone, it's hard to get out and away from that building when someone is sniping at you from 300 meters away, tends to be a little easier to get away from those people, hopefully. Uh, so this is a pretty solid setup. Um, let me go ahead and move down here into perks and talk about these for a bit real fast. There are tons of perks. Most of them are useless in Warzone. Double time is good. Uh, once you get a little more comfortable with the game, I would probably recommend going this route when you're tax sprinting uh, I mean, when you're slide canceling into your tax sprint, this becomes a, a huge deal. Until you're really doing that at a high level, uh, EOD is probably going to give you the most bang for your buck on this first perk. Uh, double time is great. Run it if you want to. But if you're not slide canceling, if you're not taking advantage of your tax sprint, you're going to be wasting this perk. EOD will save you uh, when people throw stuff at you. So that's just how it is. Scavenger is essentially, uh, for the most part, useless. If you're killing someone, they're probably going to have ammo anyways. Cold-blooded is fine, but no one really runs thermals much anymore. And then kill chain and quick fix. Uh, I don't really see any reason to use these. Quick fix is okay. The immediate health regen is nice if you're, uh, if you're in a bunch of fights and you're low on plates, but it's only going to help you so much. You got to get the kill to get the, the regen back, it's just not super beneficial. Um, on part two, we're obviously running overkill on this class to get our second gun, uh, but Ghost is really the only other option here. When you do get, again, higher level and wanna start branching out, restock is super powerful, uh, especially if you're running stuns and like knives or Simtex or whatever. Uh, you'll restock that very quickly, which is awesome but you're losing ghost because of it most of the people i think that are going to be watching these videos will get much more from ghost than you will from restock uh hardline point man those are not much you're going to want high alert is is okay um but it only works i think it's within i want to say 100 meters I'm not, it's either 100 or 200 meters. So if a sniper's looking at you from far away, it's not gonna alert you. If people are closer than that, I would assume we would probably be able to tell or know hopefully where they are anyways. So it's just kind of a, a little more of a type of a gravy-like perk. It's just kind of extra. Uh, we wanna use our 
audio cues or map uh, or call outs from our teammates or vision or use your game skills to give you high alert and then use another perk to give you some bonus uh, as opposed to wasting the perk on high alert it might save you sometimes I don't think it saves you enough to, to go past ghost uh, oh and then third perk I would probably recommend Amped, honestly. Amped is, I think, the best of all of these by far. The gun switch is just too powerful, especially if you are running a sniper of any sort. Put on Amped, pretty much just don't even think about it. Um, the next one I would say would be probably Tracker. Uh, if you're getting, again, if you're in that kind of restock, double, t double time, if you're chasing people down and going like crazy, Tracker can help a little in the dark to kind of help you find people. But... Uh, for most kind of newer players, Amped is a pretty solid third and, and just leave it at that. Now, on your lethal and your tactical, it's going to de depend on your, your play style. Uh, C4s used to be the absolute best, the only only thing to run. They got nerfed significantly. They're now uh, essentially really only good for blowing up cars, and even them, it's a little iffy. A lot of times you'll down yourself while you blow the car up. Enough people still use vehicles that I still run C4s, and I get kills like that all the time. But if you're not going to run the C4, I think Simtex is probably your best bet on a throwable. If you're going to run the kind of the more win-based uh, mindset of, of play, like a, like an OP Mark or an Iron, these guys, they're going to run a bunch of Claymores, a bunch of Proximity Mines. Um, you double these up on an entrance and it's an insta down on people so if you get a, a really good power position you and three guys all have double claymores you're going to be pretty set in that building it's going to be tough to get to you uh, but it's a little up to you in your play style uh, throwing knife is also excellent if you get someone down you hit them with a the throwing knife it's an insta they're, they're gone so you don't have to waste any more bullets you can re-pick up your throwing knife as you track over them little higher skill level and you lose out on being able to throw a nade through a window or something but it's something to think about on your tactical there's really only two choices here heartbeat sensor or stun uh, the flash doesn't do enough uh, smoke is okay but it's it's limited on what it's going to help you actually do snapshots are fine but the heartbeat's a better version and it's reusable Th that's probably the biggest thing about the heartbeat sensor is that it never ends you can use it a million times it never goes away like your flash, like your stun, like whatever. Um, gas grenades are great. Pick them up off the ground and use them early. They're really strong then. Don't use it, I would not say, as your, your class setup. I would say heartbeat sensor or stuns. You're going to get the most out of those uh, in your setup. So, say let's say we run heartbeat sensor C4. This, this looks like an excellent loadout. With this loadout, you're going to be already ahead of anyone else that's not running the absolute meta uh, loadout-wise, and then you're going to be able to compete with the people roughly that are. Now, again, skill level comes into a, a lot of this. That's why you'll see a lot of YouTubers running non-meta weapons and dropping 40 bombs. Good players can kill people with any gun. But when you're learning, when you're starting, get you a good solid class setup like this, it's, you'll see you should win more of your fights than you have been in the past. And again, how you set these guns up are important. You know, you can't just throw whatever on that you want and, and expect the gun to do optimal work. It'll still work. It'll do what you put onto it, but it just may not be what you expect to get from it. So build your weapons out like this if you're looking to have a little more streamlined setup. Uh, and I would recommend change it up all the time. It's right now, especially once they, they nerf the AMAX a little, the meta is wide open. Try guns that you want, but notice in your fights, it shouldn't take you but two or three games. If you've got your guns and someone kills you, see what guns they're running. And I'm not talking about if they sneak up behind you with Deddy, but if you're in a normal good gun fight, you feel like you fought it well and you lost, look at what they used. If, if their guns were set up better than yours, then that's probably an idea that what you were running is just not going to work very well. So you can kind of go with that. Use this to help you build up some classes. See how it helps your KD. See how it helps your gunfights. Let me know in the comments if you have a certain setup that you're really liking right now. Again, personally, the XM4 is just beasting. Again, and just really quickly, I'll go over why I like it. This setup, Raider Pad and Bruiser Grip. 
I have so much movement when I'm aimed down and shooting, I'm faster than the guy usually that's shooting back at me. So I'm strafing and he's missing shots and I'm just lasering him in the close range. That's why I like this particular setup so much. Anyways, I hope the video was helpful. Hopefully you learned a little bit of something. Uh, again, remember we got a Twitch stream. Uh, it's just, uh, it's Twitch TV uh, slash Orby Woe. You should be able to find me there. We stream almost every night. Uh, we got more videos coming soon here. We also have a TikTok. You can find it all. It's all the same name. Uh, really appreciate you guys watching the video. Hopefully we'll see you soon.